Pacific Rim, known for their great kaiju battles and character designs, and the Monsterverse, known for their great renditions of older kaiju and single-handedly reviving the Godzilla franchise. Now, while Pacific Rim hasn't had a film in over five years now, 10 years if you're a hardcore fan, it still has a dedicated fan base, having active Discord servers and Instagram pages. Now, given these are both owned by Legendary, and Pacific Rim came out a year before Godzilla, of course, a debate was born. Godzilla vs. Pacific Rim. And well, the overall consensus is that Godzilla would win with ease, mostly due to his atomic breath and his insane durability he has over the Jaegers. And then of course came the debate, Godzilla vs. the Pacific Rim Kaiju. And well, again, Godzilla would win. But let's level the playing field. What if the Pacific Rim Kaiju attacked the Monsterverse? And what if they had Monsterverse weight and durability? How would that play out? And most importantly, would Godzilla keep his crown of King of the Monsters? Hello everybody, I'm Godzilla Guy, and I've noticed Pacific Rim is slowly sinking back down to obscurity, like a dead fish in water. But by God, I'll grab that dead fish and bring its mutilated body back up to the surface. In today's video, we're going to discuss what would play out if the Pacific Rim Kaiju attacked the Monsterverse, and more specifically, Godzilla. First up, like always, some rules. Firstly, we're assuming it's just Godzilla. I don't want to do a verse v verse video, that'd be too much. Secondly, again, we're guessing that the Pacific Rim Kaiju would have the Monsterverse style weights and durability. For example, Slattern at his size would weigh around 120,000 metric tons. And since he's one of the top dogs of the Pacific Rim universe, he should pretty easily take a beam to the face like it's nothing. So we're mainly focusing on the film kaiju, as the comic ones are a little wild, and the black is just too much. Though we will be going over Apex and Breacher, as, you know, they're the two big hitters of the black. Also, Godzilla cannot go into any special state like Thermo or Evolved. Anyways, here's the kaiju that will be threatening Godzilla's crown. His list is Onibaba, Trespasser, Hardship, Knifehead, Scunner, Hakuja, Raiju, Mudovor, Itachi, Strikethorn, Leatherback, Obsidian Fury, Raijin, Slattern, Apex, Breacher, and finally the Mega Kaiju. So let's dive in. I've rewritten the script five times now, please. I beg of you subscribe if you want to see more Kaiju content. So first up is Onibaba. And well, did anybody order Crab Ragoons? Well, Onibaba has his pincers, that's really about it. Goji can just stay from afar and beam and boom, done and dealt with. Even with Monsterverse style weights and durability, small size at only 188 feet, it's really going to limit his ability to do anything. <laughs> Next up is Trespasser. And, well, again, he goes down fast. Now, he could most likely take one or two beams, but he takes some serious damage from it. As you see in GVK, Godzilla can beam for a few minutes straight. So while he does have much better durability than Onibaba, he's still going to get cooked. Next up is Hardship. And before we even talk about him, I have a crazy hot take. Hardship wore the design better than Knifehead. I'm sorry, Hardship just looks way cooler in my opinion. Anyways, Hardship will be the first to give Godzilla an actual mild challenge, as he's pretty fast, and can close the gap quickly between Godzilla and himself. But Godzilla could only be him for so long. Though, in hand-to-hand -hand combat, Hardship falls far below Godzilla. Despite the fact that I love Hardship to death, he's not making it more than 45 seconds with Godzilla. Pause. There you go, what? Again, no shock. Godzilla moves on. Next up is the aforementioned worst version of Hardship, Knifehead. Now while Knifehead is slower, he is stronger and more durable. But due to his slower speed, he can't get close to Godzilla before he beams. So again, Godzilla move on. It seems like to really have a chance against Godzilla, you need to be really durable but also fast on your feet. So you can quickly get up to him and, you know, close the gap. As a long range battle isn't going to end well for really anyone in the Pacific Rim universe. Next up is Scunner, the massive 441 foot tall, uh, shark? porcupine thing? With his massive claws and giant horns protecting his face, he is very durable. And he's the first kaiju that could take one of Godzilla's beams to the face and most likely just walk it off. Godzilla would have a hard time finding hand-to-hand -hand with Scunner as well. His hands are a little sharp. And even just getting close is tough due to his spikes on his legs. Though, I do believe Godzilla is strong enough, he'd just be able to throw Scunner around and eventually beat him to a pulp. With, like, mild difficulty again, Godzilla moves on. Next up is Hakuja. Dumb. Yeah, he's not making it far at all. While yes, he checks off the boxes of speed and durability, the issue is he's tiny. Godzilla with ease could just grab him by his tail and slam him into the ground over and over again. Sad to see such a cool kaiju go. Now onto FDA's favorite kaiju, Raiju. Raiju with monsterverse stats is quite menacing. As we see in Pacific Rim, he easily tears off Gypsy's arm like it's nothing. And his body is covered in sharp and hard plating. I truly don't think a beam would do much to him. Also, his claws being extremely sharp could easily cut into Godzilla's flesh. Godzilla would for sure have a hard time, as again, Raiju is very fast, and can take a lot of hits, though Godzilla could eventually grab onto one of his three headpieces and just tear it off, and then easily do damage to his actual face, which is more fleshy, to the point where a single beam should be enough to kill him. 
So again, Godzilla moves on, though this time with some difficulty. Next up is Mudovor. And while at first I was gonna say he actually had a chance, even he takes out three Jaegers before he fights Striker Eureka, I remembered how atrociously he got packed up by Striker Eureka. And well, I think Monsterverse should be able to do the same thing, so <laughs> moving on. Next up is the one and only flying Kaiju in the Pacific Rim universe, Otachi. And well, again, we kind of already know how this fight would go, as the Ion Dragon and Otachi are practically copy and paste of each other. Now, Otachi's acid may do more damage and be more of an annoyance than the Ion Dragon's, uh, barf. But still, Godzilla will just slap him around like they did with the Ion Dragon. So again, Godzilla moves on. Next up is Strike Thorn. The only thing he's got going for him is his spiked quills, which given he's a high toxicity kaiju, would most likely do some damage to Godzilla if they were to, you know, get into his skin and into his blood system. Though, there is one massive problem. According to the wiki, his only real weakness is close quarters combat. And while, uh, I don't know if you've noticed from the 100 clips I've already shown, but Godzilla's pretty good at that. <laughs> But I swear, the next one is where it actually starts to get difficult. Next up is my personal favorite kaiju, Leatherback. And this guy is beefy, having massive arms like a gorilla. And surprisingly, he's pretty agile, being able to make massive leaps into the air. Now besides his sheer strength, which would already, you know, pose a threat to Godzilla, more importantly is his EMP. Yes, you heard me right. Leatherback has an EMP similar to the Mutos. So now, not only would Godzilla be having a difficult time, but he'd be weakened as he was back in 2014. Also, his weakened atomic breath wouldn't do much to Leatherback as it took many shots from the plasma cannon to kill Leatherback. But the issue is, Leatherback can't really do anything to Godzilla either, so eventually Godzilla will, you know, do enough damage to the point where my goat, you know, rest in peace, gets taken down. Next up is a Jaeger that is tied for my personal favorite, Obsidian Fury. I know, he's not a kaiju, but it's controlled by a kaiju and he was on the list, and yeah, anyway. I mean, he is a beast. Having shoulder mounted AKM salvo launchers, twin chainsaw blades infused with plasma, arm mounted guns and spikes, a particle charger in his chest, claws, and a signal jammer, plus the fact that he's made out of a nearly unbreakable obsidian chrome. He is one tough enemy. Now the main issue again is the size comparison, as Godzilla could easily overwhelm him even with all of his weapons, though as you see, the Jaegers have no issue running onto Kaiju. So Fury would do a lot of damage, but due to the fact that he's just metal so therefore no regeneration, he would go down after a long and hard battle with the G-Man. Next up is Godzilla's toughest fight yet, Raijin. And why is he so tough you may ask? Well, firstly, Raijin is a towering 106 meters tall, almost eye to eye with Godzilla himself. Also, being bipedal, it grants him better speed and agility than most of the other kaiju. But most importantly is his face shield, a massive bone-like structure that protects his face. While one, it provides great durability when protecting the face, more importantly is that it has a very unique ability. For those who haven't seen Uprising or just forgot, Raijin has the ability to take in the kinetic energy from other people's attacks and use it against them. So if Godzilla beams him to the face, one, it would do almost nothing thanks to his shield, but two, he would absorb most of the beam and use it in his own attack. And well, as I write this script, I'm really stumped on this one. On one end, you have Godzilla, who is a great PvPer, and can fight much better than Raijin. But on the other hand, all the attacks Goju will throw at him, he can just absorb and throw back at Godzilla. So, just for the plot of this video, let's say somehow Godzilla moves on. Next up is Slattern, and this is where Godzilla stops. Slattern is massive towering well over Godzilla, and is the second most durable kaiju in the Pacific Rim universe. So giving him a monsterverse amp, really any of Godzilla's attacks wouldn't do anything. The only thing that could actually do any damage to him would be his thermal Godzilla form, but as we said at the start of the video, Godzilla can't go into any special states. In monsterverse stats, Slattern is faster, stronger, and more durable than Godzilla. The only thing Slattern fails at is IQ, as Goji's insanely smart, but IQ can only get you so far. And yeah, that's how Godzilla fare against the Pacific Rimverse. Now again, again, listen, this is a fully hypothetical video where all the Pacific Rim Kaiju have, you know, a monsterverse style amp. If Godzilla truly fights the film accurate Pacific Rim Kaiju, he's beating all of them, like, low difficulty. I mean, honestly, you could put Mega Kaiju, Slattern, and Breacher against Godzilla at once and he should win still. But you guys want a fun video and so do I. Anyways, wait, before you go, let's do a quick trade deal. All I ask from you is that you subscribe, and in return I will give you weekly Kaiju videos, almost daily Kaiju streams, and kaiju shorts all the time. I think personally that's a fair trade deal. And even if you don't, that's a-okay. Thank you so much for watching this far into the video. It means a lot. Anyways, everybody, as always, keep collecting. Godzilla Guy, out. See ya.